Party neglected consistently during their time in office. Question number three, the Honourable Simon Bridges. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Prime Minister. Does she stand by all her governments, of her government's policies and actions? I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, yes and yes. Right Honourable Prime Minister. <laughs> Take the yeah, We'll go to you. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Now. Does she accept there was no formal consultation, including no process for the submission of views on the government's recent oil and gas announcement? Oh, uh, Mr Speaker, there was engagement with those who work in the sector, uh, and there certainly could have not been any question over our intent, given how public we were over the fact that there is an end point to fossil fuels in New Zealand and that we needed to transition. It was a point I made quite clear in my, uh, in my campaign speech, in fact. Does she then accept that there was no cost-benefit analysis prior to the same oil and gas decision? Mr Speaker, uh, of course uh, that would require a knowledge of both uh, what would likely to be a knowledge, an, an, un, an ungettable knowledge of what is both likely to be tendered, and we know from the last time that it was a block offer, there was one successful bid, and then it would also require knowledge of the likelihood of that block offer to come on stream. It is a very difficult area to make predictions over. But what we do know is the cost to New Zealand and the environment of not making a transition over a 30-year period. Before I uh, call the next supplementary, I just want to say to the Leader of the Opposition that with his position and when he is asking supplementaries himself, there is a requirement uh, to let the Prime Minister be heard and his constant interjection um, makes me think that he doesn't actually want to continue asking supplementary. A point of order, Mr Speaker. Uh, I, I hope the member is not going to argue with me, because if I she is, she will, lose, she will lose some supplementaries. I just wanted to make a point, Mr Speaker, and uh, ask If it relates to that ruling that I've just made? Well, you're often talking to us about um, there being order in this House, and sometimes it is the length of answers that do sometimes lead to some of that disorder, as you know. Well, I, th I think that was really marginal. Does a does the uh, Leader of the Opposition have a further supplement? Yes, thank you, Mr Speaker. Is it true that government oil and gas officials only learned of the decision the day before it was announced and that the same is true for oil and gas sector heads who learned that evening before the announcement? Uh, Mr Speaker, uh, when it comes to the officials, I can say no. <laughs> was the announcement on oil and gas uh, without formal consultation and cost-benefit analysis uh, rushed through because of the Prime Minister's trip to Europe the day after the announcement was made and her desire to make an impression there on the student leaders and the uh, world's leaders? Uh, absolute, Mr Speaker, absolutely not. The urgency, Mr Speaker, the urgency was... The urgency was the fact that the Minister for Energy had a requirement to make a decision around the 2018 block offer. She followed the requirements of the Crown Minerals Act, which the member will be familiar with, in order to make that decision. And secondly, the urgency is called climate change. It's already here, and you should visit Kiribati and Tuvalu to see the urgency of it. How many questions? Supplementary question, the right honourable Winston Peters. Has the Prime Minister read of any other reports of political leaders suggesting that we're going to have to come to grips with this matter, belatedly so, just over the last weekend? <laughs> or, 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 or I want to, want to make it very clear that if the Prime Minister is going to answer that question, it is to be an official report. Do you consider media reports official, Mr no. Speaker? <laughs> so many questions. So, so many questions. Simon Bridges. Does the Prime Minister accept this decision will do absolutely nothing to lower domestic or international consumption of hydrocarbons and, in fact, may see emissions rise? Uh, Mr Speaker, I accept reports like the likes of Westpac that says that there are, in fact, uh, money and uh, benefits to be had to New Zealand of making an early transition decision. Uh, this decision will not affect the industry today or tomorrow, but it will in 30 years' time. 
And the reason it won't is because we are honouring every one of those 50-plus permits that are already out there, but we will not pretend that we do not have urgency over this issue, unlike the opposition, who seems to have absolutely no plan at all. Has she seen any, any official estimates on what emissions reductions there will be from her decision? Uh, Mr Speaker, the plan here is to ensure that we are transitioning away from fossil fuels. It seems to be an issue that the member has not quite got his head around, that even if we used every single fossil fuel currently available, we would still not meet our climate targets. But again, I would expect that shallow analysis from someone who has no plan. A, a point of order, the Honourable Grant Robertson. Mr Speaker, um, I invite you to, to hear, consider a, a ruling based around how you treat the asking of questions in Parliament, which you've been very, very clear about in terms of the silence that required, versus, versus the noise uh, that we've just witnessed over two questions to the Prime Minister that began seconds after she started answering. Now, I know there can't be complete silence, and I'm not asking for that, but it does create a, 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 a quite a large imbalance in terms of the way the questions and answers are treated. Speaking, no, before that happens, the person who interjected during the point of order will stand, withdraw and apologise. There was a member in that quarter who interjected loudly at the beginning of Mr Robertson's point of order. Who was it? Uh, I withdraw and apologise. Mr Brownlee. Oh, Mr Speaker, speaking to the point that raised by Mr Robertson, it would help if the answerer of a question answered the question rather than uh, going into some uh, really quite an interesting uh, political statement saying that uh, effectively there was no analysis, it was just an idea that we had. And I'm on my feet, Mr Robertson. You will now stand, withdraw and apologise. I withdraw and apologise. Um, can, can I uh, make it clear? I was getting concerned with the noise levels, but I am aware that for people outside the House and the way that the microphones work, they have no trouble um, hearing. I'm also aware of the fact that uh, people within the gallery are generally not impressed uh, with the sort of behaviour that we were seeing from my left uh, earlier on. Uh, and I made the judgement that as I could hear the answer, um, I would let it run. Speaker. How on earth can the Prime Minister criticise so-called shallow analysis from the opposition when her government asked for precisely no official advice on emissions, on costs of living, actually on anything? Oh, Mr Speaker, firstly, I refute that. Secondly, as we've repeatedly said... There are, over, there are over 50 permits currently in operation that will continue. The size of the North Island currently has permits over it. Oil and gas exploration will continue for at least 30 years in New Zealand. What we have established is that consumers will not have low-cost options and alternatives to fossil fuels until we start taking responsibility and indicating that we have to transition. That's the bold decision this government makes. Now I'm asking the opposition, show us your plan. Order. Before I, before I uh, sort of take supplementaries off the National Party for the interjections, which I won't do now because I was holding the uh, Leader of the Opposition up, uh, Mr Simpson and Mr Bennett will not interject for the balance of this question time. Is that understood? I just want, a, just want a slight nod. Thank you. <laughs> the Honourable Simon Bridges. Thank you. Thank you. In light of this oil and gas decision, does the government have similar plans regarding stopping coal exploration and production? Mr Speaker, this was something that related to oil and gas exploration. We've said that we will not continue mining on conservation land. And uh, when it comes to coal, we've only spoken around uh, coal-generated um, energy use. Uh, so the answer outside of that is no. <laughs> how, how can that be uh, a good answer, given her concern on climate change, and given that coal has doubled the emissions of gas 
and Climate Minister James Shaw has signed an international pact, pact to phase out coal for power generation by 2013. And Mr Speaker, I just acknowledge the fact that we had signed up to that pact, uh, but the point is that actually the industry and users of coal have already faced up to the facts. That's why Fonterra, for instance, and other major industry players are already transitioning away from it. That's why my message to the opposition is catch up. Question number four. Priyanka Radhakrishnan. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.